Hi everybody, uh, welcome back to Horror and Sci-Fi Collectibles. I'm here with Jason himself, C.J. Graham. Uh, hands down, my favorite Jason movie. He already signed this for me, but I'm going to be doing a review for that. You got anything to say? I can't believe. Horror and Sci-Fi Collectibles. Yes. That's a mouthful. It is. You know, we got to think of something shortening. Maybe what, just a hibernation or something. HS I don't know. Collectibles? I think HS? that would work. Okay. What do you think? Because, right. you know, that's how we do everything, right? Yeah. I mean, you think about it. We'll think about fishing companies, and you think about Kentucky Fried Chicken, KFC. Mm -hmm. we got to summarize that, okay? Okay. All HSC, right. then. Yeah, I All think right. so. All right. Thanks. You heard it here first. Hi everybody and welcome to the newly branded H&S Collectibles. Uh, I'm just going to shorten it to that now instead of horror and sci-fi collectibles like CJ suggested. Uh, but go ahead and subscribe. I do a video every Tuesday and Friday of different horror and sci-fi related figures or I'm even branching out and starting to do little discussions and movie reviews. So uh, subscribe and don't miss anything. So getting into this figure uh, this is the Part 6 uh, Jason Lives uh, figure from NECA, the Ultimate Series. Um, I had C.J. Graham sign this at a convention a couple years ago, and he signed Jason Lives, C.J. Graham's Jason 6. Um, just looking at the box, nice logo on the side, some shots on the back, him with the machete, uh, picture of this tombstone, him unmasked, him with the spear, the mask laying in the dirt, and a brief description on Tommy Jarvis what happened and why he went back so I saw something on Facebook I thought was funny that this picture of Tom Matthews as Tommy Jarvis and it said every death after part six is the result of this guy's bad decision uh, I thought that was funny so shot of him on the inside pretty good looking picture of him there uh, but I keep the box up on the shelf behind him on display uh, and the accessories he comes with, I'm just going to show you these real quick, still in the packaging. An, an extra hand. This hand is open a little bit wider than the other two to accommodate the machete handle. And then it comes with the uh, spear uh, that Tommy tore off the fence and stabbed Jason with that brought him back to life. And I think Jason only used it to kill two people in that movie, the two people with the bug at the beginning. Uh, but the spear is in two pieces and you actually put it together through each of his hands and bring it together uh, is how they got around having either end of the spear fit through a hand and it's a very snug fit. Um, so I've got him posed right now. This is the base for making him appear to be tied to the bottom of the lake that came with the Camp Crystal Lake accessory set from NECA. Uh, I'd get one of those too. It also comes with a uh, Camp Crystal Lake sign as well as a uh, the dock that Jason stood on when he shot the girl in the eye with the uh, uh, spear gun in part three. So you gotta take his head off to get that chain off but it's nice and easy. Pops on. I wish all the heads popped on and off as easy as they seem to on this figure. So. Uh, looking at him, close up of him, you know he's pretty nasty looking. Uh, we didn't get to see him too well in the movie, uh, and and I think maybe the ears were a little bit pointier in the movie. But I like this; it's a good look for him. Uh, again, it's my favorite movie of the series. Um, uh, it could just be that it's the first one I got to see in the theater. All the others I saw on VHS up to that point. So he comes with a machete, about like you would expect. He comes with the utility belt on. He comes with the uh, uh, small survival knife. Uh, well, small at this scale, wasn't small in the movie. And that's a, that's a fun memory of CJ too. We have a photo op with CJ that if you go back and look at my Kane Hodder autograph video, you can see it on the wall. And CJ grabbed my son by the back of his neck, pulled him over, and you know had the knife to his throat uh, for the picture. So that was kind of fun. But he comes with the knife, the machete, 
Uh, the mask comes on and off, and I do like that mask. Uh, I do wish that hole, the, the axe wound in the mask went all the way through. And that's something that sometime I may get a little bit adventurous and actually cut that through, kind of like it was in the movie. I just haven't done it yet. I'm not too much into altering my figures, but I might try it. So he uh, uh, moves at the waist very easy. In fact, he's a little bit loose. He's taken a dive off the shelf a couple times, and, and that might be what's resulting in that. But that's fine for me because I leave him hanging in the air on that stand. Uh, his feet move, but not a whole lot because they run into his pants. Um, his knees are nice and bendable, uh, almost to a 90. Um, then, uh, of course, a lot of, lot of movement in his hips, elbows, his, his wrists are very flexible. Uh, you got a lot, a lot of options on how to pose him there. Uh, but I usually just keep him uh, uh, done with the uh, uh, knife and machete, both in the sheaths and, and hanging in the air. So uh, I think he's very neat. One of my favorites. Like I said, definitely my favorite movie. My favorite look for Jason is part seven when Kane played him the first time. And you could see the bones through his outfit and all that. One thing that is happening on this figure, the sheath is spreading apart here. So I may have to super glue that. His utility belt is not separate from his body and the throwing knives do not come out. Um, so I just try to be pretty careful with them if I ever mess with them. I don't want to break these off the body. But uh, there he is. That's the figure. And uh, uh, one other thing he comes with that I forgot to show you was the, the tombstone from Part 6. Just the simple Jason Voorhees and... You know, nice texturing to it, you know, kind of like, like it's broken and cracked. Uh, so that's a nice little touch. Uh, now a little bit about CJ. Um, one, one thing I'll tell you, um, great guy. We met him about two years ago the first time. He signed this for me and then we had our photo op with him. And then I saw him again a few months later. And uh, uh, he was at another show and Kane was actually yelling down the aisle at him while we were talking about how much part six sucks uh, him and Kane have a, a you know a little bit of a rivalry going that they keep going at, at the shows which is uh, very funny to to watch in fact when we met him this time he was trying uh, uh, CJ was trying to offer a lady uh, who was wearing a shirt that had Kane's picture on it that he wanted to cross Kane's face out and autograph over the top of it and uh, she wouldn't let him and he was offering her five dollars to to do it and go down there and show Kane to see what he'd do so that was funny the interaction between them is great but uh, uh, this time around he shot that video with me um, talked to me for a little while uh, but the, the second time what I was gonna say we met him and I got an autograph from him for my cousin my cousin couldn't be at the show and CJ took the time to give my cousin a call on the phone and actually speak to him for a little while about four three or four minutes maybe but just enough to say hi I'm CJ Graham and I'm signing this picture for you and your cousin's gonna mail it to you and it just really made his day I think so great guy if you're at a con stop in and see him at least talk to him uh, you'll enjoy him so that's it for this one. Uh, again, don't forget to subscribe. I got more Jason figures to show, and I got some other things from the, the Days of the Dead convention uh, to, to show off, especially the, the Ghostbusters set. That's a video I'm getting ready to shoot. So uh, come back and see me. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you later.